I hope you are feeling fierce today because we're going to be talking about a murky monster called preeclampsia. Now this is often chalked off as a pregnancy complication, but preeclampsia is rarely discussed in details and leaving mamas frankly in the dark about its symptoms. So let's lift that curtain off. Let's discuss who's at risk for preeclampsia and what to look for. Hi there, I'm Genevieve Holland, AKA Mama Natural, and the author of the best-selling natural pregnancy book, The Mama Natural Week-by-Week -week Guide to Pregnancy and Childbirth. I also offer a free pregnancy week-by-week -week series via email or text that you can find a link to in the video description below. My passion is first and foremost empowering mamas because we all know that knowledge is power. This is why I want to shout about preeclampsia from the rooftops. Now, while it only really affects between five and 8% of pregnant women, for such a dangerous condition, it is shocking to me how little is known about it. So let's unpack it. What is preeclampsia? Well, it was formerly known as toxemia. It's a pregnancy complication where mamas experience high blood pressure and fluid retention. It can lead to inadequate blood supply to the uterus, and for baby, it can cut off important nutrients, and it raises the risk of premature birth, low birth rate, and stillbirth. Now, more worrisome is that preeclampsia is the start of a condition called eclampsia, and this is a life threatening situation for mama that can cause seizures and blood clotting issues. Now there really isn't a consensus about what exactly causes preeclampsia, although the latest research is showing that it's actually an immune system response. But there are several risk factors that you should know about. So let's dive right into the signs to look out for with preeclampsia. The first is headaches. Now these can be quite severe and you should talk to your provider immediately. Now it is common to get hormonal headaches when you're pregnant, so sometimes it's tricky to know which is which. That's why it's always great just to check in with your provider because they can help you distinguish the two. Another symptom is dizziness. Now, unexplained dizziness is a sign that something isn't quite right. Vision changes. Now, do know that some women, their eyes get funky when they get pregnant and they all of a sudden can't read as well close up, but just keep an eye out for that. If you find your, your vision is blurred a lot or you're seeing floaters or tiny specks, definitely talk to your doctor or midwife. High blood pressure, of course, this is obvious, but they do call high blood pressure the silent killer because there's not a lot of symptoms that go along with it. That's why it's so vital that you go to every single pregnancy appointment because you're gonna get your blood pressure checked every single time and they can catch it if it starts to rise. Fatigue, now pregnancy is exhausting, okay? Let's face it, especially in the first trimester, you might find yourself napping a lot. But if all of a sudden you notice a sudden increase, especially later on in your pregnancy, this could be a sign of concern. Nausea or abdominal pain. Now, like being tired, nausea can go along with pregnancy, but if you're getting it later in your pregnancy or if it comes on really suddenly or you've got sharp abdominal pains, definitely talk to your doctor or midwife. Sudden weight gain. Now, preeclampsia affects the way your body's organs function. So one of the symptoms is that you retain water. And the way this will manifest is that you'll gain weight all of a sudden and a pretty dramatic amount. And that's why it's so important to go to your pregnancy appointments with your doctor or midwife because they will know this, they will flag this, and they will definitely look further into it. Swelling. Now, while some hand and feet swelling is totally normal, if it starts to get out of hand and you have other symptoms that go along with it, this could indicate preeclampsia. Protein in the urine. Now this will be detected when you do your little urine test, when you check in with your doctor or your midwife, and what they're gonna find is protein in your urine, which shows that your kidneys aren't functioning as they should be. Now if diagnosed, there can be ways to manage this illness. The first is rest. Taking it easy can really help those blood pressure spikes and try to avoid stress at all costs, which I know can be challenging, but do your best. You also wanna have bed rest which can be tricky, especially if you're working or if you're in the nesting mode, but the more you can just rest and follow your doctor's orders, the better. And laying and sleeping on your left side is especially helpful if you're dealing with high blood pressure because this supports your vena cava or the large vein that transports blood to your heart. You're also gonna have frequent monitoring because this can really help. They're gonna look at your blood pressure. They're gonna look at your protein levels. Um, they might do some more ultrasounds or some fetal monitoring just to be sure everything's okay. 
okay. In some cases, you will have to be hospitalized, but this is in severe preeclampsia, and it's really the best place to be so that you and baby stay safe. Various medications can also be prescribed to lower your blood pressure and prevent seizures. Now, this again is only if you have a severe case. Some doctors will also give you steroid shots to help your baby's lungs develop in case they're born early. Now, really the only cure to preeclampsia is giving birth. So that's why catching it early, treating it, changing some of the lifestyle factors can help you have a healthier and a safe pregnancy. With that in mind, let's talk a little bit about some risk factors. Now, of course, being pregnant in itself is a risk factor for preeclampsia, but there are other things too, like age. Did you know that teenage moms or moms over 35 are more at risk? Also having one or more autoimmune conditions, like I mentioned earlier, also blood pressure problems. If you had high blood pressure before pregnancy, you are more at risk during your pregnancy. If your mom or your sister had preeclampsia, black and Hispanic women are more prone to this condition. Multiples put more stress on the body, especially the placenta. A higher BMI also will elevate your risk. Drinking or smoking excessively before pregnancy can also increase your risk. Now, while you're not able to prevent preeclampsia, there are some things you can do with your lifestyle that could reduce your chances. First is monitoring your weight. You wanna maintain as healthy as you can a good BMI during your pregnancy. You wanna drink enough water, drink 10, at least 10 glasses, Try to get 30 minutes of exercise daily. This is great for your baby's IQ too. Did you know that? It actually can help your baby's brain function. It's hard, I know, but stress is seriously toxic and can really affect your health. So remember to make time for yourself, whatever you can do to promote that deep relaxation take your prenatal vitamin. Because folic acid can actually reduce your risk for preeclampsia, this is huge. Garlic has been linked to lowering blood pressure. Tart cherry juice. Now this juice contains naturally occurring melatonin and deficiencies of melatonin has been tied to preeclampsia. Now some mamas have benefited from doing something called the Brewer's Diet. And the focus in this diet is ample protein intake and sodium, believe it or not. And the thought is by eating protein and salt, you're actually gonna be increasing your blood volume, stabilizing your blood pressure, and ensuring that your placenta receives adequate blood flow. Always talk to your doctor before trying a new diet. Finally, I'm gonna share a personal story when I was pregnant with Faith, I started drinking dandelion root tea every morning. Well, wouldn't you know it, I started to have dizzy spells a couple weeks after I started drinking this tea. And I went to my regular midwife appointment and she's like, oh my gosh, your blood pressure has dropped 20 points. Well, sure enough, it was the dandelion root tea. As soon as I stopped it, my blood pressure returned back to normal. But I just share this in case if you're struggling with higher blood pressure and you need to bring it down, you could try the tea. Okay, so preeclampsia is a serious condition in some instances. It's not fun, but it can be treated if you stay on top of it. You have now empowered yourself to know what signs to look for, what you can do from a lifestyle perspective, from a diet perspective. So no, that's all you can really do. And that's what it's about, doing your best each and every day. So thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more natural parenting and pregnancy tips and tricks. And if you're a mama-to-be, remember to sign up for my free week to week pregnancy updates. I'll have a link to that in the video description below. Thanks so much for tuning in.